Good morning, everybody. I'm Frequented World, and I just received a package that I have been waiting for the last couple of days. I might be the last guy on the face of the planet to actually buy one of these things, but there is a good reason for it. There it is, guys. There is what I ordered. This is a Sony FDR AX53 camcorder. And everybody right now at home is going, oh, camcorder, 2000 technology. However, these things can be handy depending on what you're shooting. The question I want to answer in the next couple of videos is, is the Sony AX53 still a worthwhile buy in 2019? This camera it came out in 2016 and Sony has not replaced it with a newer model yet. Nobody buys camcorders anymore. But if you use a camcorder, you can get used to that handheld, full control, everything, uh, in a nice tidy package that fits in the palm of your hand and once you go the camcorder route there's always a good use for it. In my case I can always find a good use for a camcorder. I own the Sony CX700 upgraded to the CX900 which had a nice big one inch sensor on it and now I've upgraded again to the AX53. The AX53 does not have that nice one inch sensor. There were two things that always bothered me with the CX900. Uh, one was that it didn't shoot 4K video and the second one was that it only had a 12 times optical zoom. I still have young kids and they are in every sport imaginable. I know I drive them around seven nights a week. We do baseball, soccer, swimming, drama. These are all things that I do record throughout the year. Um, not as much as I used to, but I still have a lot of family uh, videos that I make, stuff I don't put online. And the camcorder is great for stuff like that. The other place that the camcorder is great is in the boat. When you're fishing in the boat, it's just easy to have something that you can hang on to in one hand. And if you're filming guys in another boat, you still want to be able to zoom in and things. So there's a there's a hundred places that I still use a camcorder. What I want to do is compare the AX53 to the Sony CX900 and see if some of the deficiencies from that camera have been addressed in the newer model. There were a few things that were always uh, a bit buggy with the other camera. It was a fantastic camera and the price that I got for it five years down the road states to the quality um, with full manual controls and the one inch sensor on there it's still a highly sought after camera but for me I'm using my other cameras to do professional work I just need something to record home videos is this gonna fit the bill wow so I've gotta say right off the hop this camera I'm impressed with the size it is about a third smaller than the CX900 and it weighs half a pound less so unfortunately, they still ship with the smallest battery that you can get for the camcorder. You can get about an hour and 20 minutes worth of recording um, with this little battery. But the nice thing they do, I still own the 100 batteries, which will give you probably three hours of recording time. And they don't change batteries every time they come out with a new camcorder. So Sony, you get points for that. I can still use my old batteries for the new camcorder. So the other main reason to upgrade to this camera is that it has a system in here called the BOSS system, which is a stabilization system where the lens is actually mounted on a gyro inside. And it will be electronically powered once we put a battery on here. One of the best stabilized systems in any camcorder ever made. So I keep saying I upgraded to this camera, but this camera is not the upgrade to the CX900. The AX700 is the upgrade to the CX900. That has a one inch sensor, 4K, but again, it only has a 12 times optical zoom. It seems that Sony only makes uh, one inch sensors with 12 times zoom. I don't know why that is, but for me, it's just not enough. What am I giving up by not going with the upgrade camera? Well, I'm giving up the one inch sensor. So this camera is probably not gonna be as good in low light, but we'll talk about that in a second and I'm giving up full manual control. There are no control buttons on the outside of this camera for um, adjusting aperture, gain, and shutter speed. And apparently you can only adjust one of those at any given time, and the other two will go to auto. You can, however, set an upper limit to your gain for the camera, so it will not go, say you pick 24 decibels, it won't go above that, so it shouldn't introduce too much uh, low light noise, 
but we're giving up full manual control. Now, because this camera doesn't have the one inch sensor, what Sony did was they lowered the megapixels. They designed a whole new sensor for this camera. They made it a 16.6 .6 megapixel sensor and they made the pixels 60% larger than the standard camcorder with this size chip. So that should mean that I'm hoping this camera at least equals the CX900. We'll see. I have footage from over the years of night shots. We'll compare this camera to those shots and see how it compares. I also have this lens here, which is a 1.7 times teleconverter, the VCL HGD 1758, and that's a Sony lens. Very heavy, but optically an excellent lens. And we're going to try it on this camcorder. That's going to give us a 1.7 times zoom on top of the 20 times optical that the new camcorder gives us. This should be fantastic for wildlife. And to pair with that, we also have the Sony VCL HED 0758, which is the 0.7 wide angle converter. Again, super heavy, super well constructed, very sharp lens. And uh, we're going to try that out on the camcorder too. So not only do we have a faster lens on here, an f2, um, we have a wider lens on this camera. It has a 26.9 millimeter wide angle. So the old camcorder was 30. So this should be a little bit wider and a little bit nicer for vlogging style videos. So what I'm trying to discern here is that even though I didn't upgrade the camera, did I get an upgrade by switching to the AX53? So let's find out, let's do some tests, let's check out some 4K footage, and let's just see how this baby operates. Okay, I just want to give you guys my first two minute uh, impressions on this camera. It is amazingly light. This is so much more portable, and God, I feel like I, I would just use this more just from the sheer size of it. Um, I also like that they moved the zoom rocker to the horizontal position here across the back instead of it was vertical it was on this side over here but it was you had to push forward or backwards before this just seems much more intuitive the only thing that i'm not liking right off the hop here is the three inch little screen so the screen is quite a bit smaller and it doesn't seem to be as responsive is it going to work absolutely and if that's the price i have to pay to have a much more um compact camera then that's what we have to do so far it feels great in my hand I also wanted to show you with the five-year-old uh, batteries that I'm using here and I've been playing with the camera for about an hour I've still got 264 minutes of uh, time left in these big 100 batteries and that is not a new battery those are wasabi batteries I use wasabi for all my stuff five years old and still holds an amazing amount of power a couple of things that I am finding uh, that I don't like. I'm absolutely sure that this touch screen now is not as sensitive as the old uh, camcorder. I, I'm constantly tapping it more than once to make my selection. So absolutely not as sensitive and it's smaller. So that's a little bit annoying. I've selected manually that I want to control the aperture here. And that's great. We can do that with the front ring. However, it doesn't even show me any of the information for what my gain and what my shutter speed are going to. So even though I can't control them, it would be really nice to see what they were set at as I'm uh, dialing these up and down. So, and you can only select one item at a time. So it's either iris or shutter speed or exposure or focus or zoom or whatever, but you cannot have more than one. So there's the shutter speed. And again, now we have no clue what, uh, the gain is doing, what the aperture is set on, so a little bit annoying. And one other nitpick that probably no one else in the world would ever notice um, is this has always bugged me on the old camera, it was the same way. And that is when you turn on your peaking, okay. Um, so if we turn our peaking on here and we select a color, red, it's on all the time. Even though we're not in manual focus mode, um, it it's on and it shouldn't be. It should only come on when you're in manual focus mode. That always annoyed me about the CX-900 and apparently it's the same uh, 
with the new camera. It's just, it's something that, that means every time you want to turn, every time you want to go into manual mode, you've manually got to turn peaking on. It's just an extra step. So I tried both of the uh, teleconverters, the wide angle and the zoom, the big heavy Sony adapters I showed you guys. And on this camera, they just feel too heavy. The old camera was substantially bigger and heavier, and I think there was more metal in there. So I don't know about using them on this new camera unless I absolutely need to. This camera is wider to begin with and zooms in a lot more than the old one, so maybe it's something I won't use that much. It's nice to have, but um, I don't know how much I'll use them. It seems to me that when I get a new toy I want to play with, it's a crummy, crappy, gray, rainy day out. You can see there in the background. But I'm still going to take this camera out and uh, see what it looks like, zoom it in all the way, and see if we can get some birds or something on there just to check out some 4K footage from it. And here we are recording on the new AX53. The little bit wider angle um, lens makes a huge difference. I'm used to holding the other camcorder, which was a lot heavier, out at arm's length. I don't have to do that. I can hold it back a little bit, and it's not as heavy, so bonus for me. And the stabilization on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing. And now that I've come forward into the light, I could actually see the face recognition working, uh, selecting my face. So that's the autofocus should be pretty good on this as well. Okay, very windy out here, so we'll be able to test the wind cancelling as well as a full speed zoom right here. And reverse full speed zoom. That is full zoom right there. I guess that's 30 times, uh, and that would be 30 times 26.9, whatever that calculation works out to. So I've actually just touched my face and it's tracking my face really well. So in terms of vlogging, this might be a good solution as long as everything stays in focus and it's not hunting. Um, we can also test, I'm walking right now, so the, the uh, in-body stabilization with this BOSS system, I'm looking at the lens and it's bouncing all around. It's actually very cool. I think, I don't know, I think just on portability alone this camera is a score. No, I think I'm absolutely loving this camera. It's really windy out right now, so I don't know how much noise we're picking up in the microphone here. I'm just using the onboard mic, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to test that when we get back in as well. But so far, I'm loving this camera. I think I did get an upgrade with the AX53. He's chasing a moth, and I think he just ate it. Oh, he did. He ate it. <laughs> Gage, you're not supposed to eat the wildlife. 